Good evening, friends. Welcome to the Schumpelt House. Um, we're delighted that you're able to be here with us. We're going to take some try time now to try something a little different in our um, quarantined, uh, social isolated condition to gather together as a church for a Good Friday service. The way that we thought we'd do this today is we thought we'd do a family-friendly service instead of just me sitting there talking um, a lot. This is a service that's supposed to be tactile. It's supposed to invite us into it, to, to think, to reflect, to pray, and to, um, to acknowledge Christ's great gift to us together as a family and as a church family. I want to invite you, as best you're able, to to join us, to sing with us, to pray with us, to hear God's word together. Um, almost everything that I'm going to be reading is going to be coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, so that's a great place to begin, although my first reading comes from John. So uh, if you've got your Bible handy, you can join us that way, or you can just uh, listen as I read. We want to once again welcome you, and we pray that wherever you are, that you are well, that you feel the Father's delight and know his love for you. And we thank you for joining us as we worship now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we can gather together. We thank you for your love for us. A never-ending, never-failing love that took your only begotten Son to the cross. Father, as we remember this story, we pray that our eyes would be open to how great your love is. That we would be encouraged when we face challenges, to know that you are a God who faces them with us. As we face suffering, to know that you are a God who has suffered with us and who loves us and understands our suffering. And you are a God who has died for us. We thank you, Father, for drawing near to us and sending your Son to rescue us. Gather us together now, wherever we are, that we may see and delight in the never-ending, never-failing, love of your son. Amen. The, the, the story of the passion begins really on Thursday night, but we didn't really want to do two services. So we're going to do begin our story, though, on Thursday night uh, as Jesus invited all of his disciples together for a Passover feast. Uh, in John chapter 13, verse 1, it says it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of that love. And of course, showing them the full extent of the love in doing so, Coram Accord, he took off his robes and he got a towel and he wrapped a towel around his body. And then he washed his disciples' feet because they needed to be washed. They, when you had a nice meal, you needed your feet washed because your feet could get a little bit stinky. Now, he said when he did that, that I am your master and your teacher. And if I wash your feet, then you need to go and do likewise. But Jesus, he knew as well that he would have to do more than wash his disciples' feet. He would have to save them from their sins. And so Jesus, on that night, was preparing himself to become the perfect sacrifice to save us all from our sins. Now Matthias is going to lead us in a little song to start our worship, uh, Amazing Love. Sing along, please.
you were forsaken, undetected, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. had eaten with the disciples that night. After he had blessed them, um, prayed for them, and then he went off to pray on his own. And they went with him to the Garden um, of the Mount of Olives, where they prayed. And then, while Jesus was there praying, he was betrayed by Judas. He was taken and bound and brought to be um, examined by Pilate. So let's read in Matthew chapter 27. Uh, you can follow along or just read here. Matthew, Matthew chapter 27 is where we begin. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Jesus stood before the governor, the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even a single charge, to the great amazement of the crowd. Or sorry, to the great amazement of the governor. When Jesus was brought before Pilate, he was tied up with ropes. So Corm's going to show us what that looks like here. We too are tied up, aren't we? But we're not always tied up with rope. We're tied up uh, by the wrong things that we do, by the decisions that we make, the words that we say, the ways that we hurt each other and other people. It's our sins that tie us up until Jesus frees us. Sorry, until Jesus forgives us and sets us free. Thank you. Okay. Can I like can oh, you let me go yeah. now? Thank you. Jesus spent a lot of time, well, a few hours anyways, under Pilate's care. And while he was there, Pilate started to realize that there was something wrong here. That Jesus wasn't the rebel that the Pharisees and the chief priests were accusing him to be, that he seemed to be an innocent man. He was getting frustrated. And they kept saying that he, they needed to kill him. So Matthew 27 tells us what Pilate did. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead, of an, up, instead an uproar was starting, he took water and he washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. 
It is your responsibility. Pilate washed his hands to tell people that Jesus' death was not his fault. Now, have you ever tried to not take responsibility for something wrong that you did? Or have you done something that you weren't allowed to do and pretended that you didn't do it? That's all lying. Let's silently ask God to forgive us and to help you make things right. Let's take a minute to pray quietly. Friends, we're come to God confessing our sins, and we are washed clean by Jesus' death. Now we dip our fingers in the water and touch it to our foreheads. As you do that, think about how Jesus' death washes us clean from all the wrong things that we do. After Pilate had washed his hands of the, the thing, the Jews demanded that Jesus be crucified. So the governor gave the Pilate the governor gave Jesus to the Jews to be crucified. Matthew 27 tells us what happened then. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him, they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The Bible tells us that although Jesus is God, he is also completely human, except that he never sinned. Jesus knows what it's like to be sad. He knows what it's like to be angry. He knows what it's like to be afraid. And he knows what it's like to be in trouble. Before Jesus was crucified, the soldiers pushed a crown of thorns onto his head. They didn't do it because they were praising him as a king. They did it to mock him and to hurt him. Think about times that you've been mocked and hurt by the meanness of others. By the times you've been made to feel alone because of the words and the mean actions that other people have done to you. Can you think about that, Corey? No. Oh, no, don't put that I on. I know. Um... Now, as we think about that, I want you to remember that Jesus understands that. Jesus was mocked like we're mocked. Jesus was hurt like you've been hurt. You have a God who loves you and knows your pains and your sufferings. After they had mocked him, they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha. You can read along with me in Mark 15 as we hear what happened there. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They then offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Now here's the thing to remember, friends. Our sins, whether they seem big or small, are the reason that Jesus had to die on the cross. That's the only way that God could put the world he created right again. No person could do this. Only God could. 
Corum, McCord, I'm going to give you a chance to, uh, we're going to hear that sound. I want you to imagine what it would be like to pound a nail not into uh, a board, but into, into um, somebody's hand, somebody who loves you. Remember, we did so Jesus, all of this? just pound it as much as you want. Turn. Now court's turn. Sorry for the noise, folks out there in internet land. After Jesus was crucified. While Mark 15 picks up, while Jesus was hanging on the cross, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shakhtani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran and filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone, he said. Let's see if Elijah takes him down. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last breath. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when a centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. Jesus loves each of us so much that he died for us. His death was painful and hard. But he was willing to give himself up for us, to make us right with God. Now, while Matthias sings, I'm going to give each of you a chance to draw some pictures on the cross of hearts, um, or flowers, things to remind us that though the cross is ugly, it's a sign of God's love for us. You can draw on that if you want. Okay, when well, I survey. The wonderful cross.
short time after Jesus died, his body was taken off the cross by one of his disciples, a rich man named Joseph of Arimathea, who took him and put him in his own tomb and sealed it with a great big rock. Jesus' body was buried in keeping with Isaiah's prophecy, a prophecy made over 500 years before Jesus died. Let's hear that prophecy from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 9. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. And by his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. And he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great. He will divide the spoils with the strong because he has poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the sinners. Jesus, the King of life, died and was buried. But his death brought us life. He washed us clean from sin and guilt with his blood. And his death is not the end. After three days, Jesus would rise from the grave proving that he is God and that his promises are true. Matthias is going to close us with the song, He Will Hold Me Fast.
Savior in chains. We have seen him crucified. We have heard his cries and witnessed his suffering and death. It is finished. Go from this solemn service remembering all that Christ has done for you. We miss you. We love you. We hope that you are well wherever you are. God bless you. Bye bye. You guys can all wave goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank goodbye. you, Mathia. For, thank you, boys. We miss you guys. Hope you're all well. <laughs>